All right, so we are going to start uh, today. Um, hi, everybody. How you doing? This is Real Variables on location once again from Dr. Perrine's house. Um, broadcasting live. So anyhow, um, we're going to do Taylor's formula, which is the first part of section 4.4. I told you we'd break that up into two spots. There's another video on L'Hopital's rule. Um, and so Taylor's formula, you probably remember Taylor polynomials from the series part of the end of calculus two. And so Taylor's uh, series come in there. And so Taylor's formula just kind of sets the stage for being able to use Taylor polynomials to approximate functions. And so if you think about it like this, if you remember way back into Calc 1 where we had this linear approximation function, which was just the tangent line, right? If this is a y over here, um, y is equal to f of a plus f prime of a, f of x, or x minus a. And that's just really, uh, and that's an approximation, right? And so if you think about the, the basic mean value theorem, the basic mean value theorem says what? It says um, there exists a C such that um, F prime of C equals, uh, let's say, F of X minus F of A over X minus A, right? So if we just rewrite this uh, by multiplying both sides by X minus A, you get F of X minus f of a, so add f of a to the other side. And so you get this idea, and this is the time where it's exactly equal to. So it's equal to at one point, specifically at, at, uh, at c, it's equal to uh, f of x when f prime is at c. So you can use an approximation by taking a power of one here. Well, obviously we can't always use that, but uh, that's, that's only that only works for the value x, but as an approximation, right? We can work for numbers close to um, a. Uh, this only works for a, I should say. But um, you, can, you can work at it like that. So Taylor's form is just a generalization of this idea, okay? And so we use the mean value theorem to prove Taylor's formula. Um, and so in order to do the proof, all right, we're going to define two functions. We're going to define, sorry, can't do the proof. I haven't told you the theorem yet. So let's uh, let's state the theorem. <laughs> Getting a little ahead of myself here. Um, so what is Taylor's formula? This is theorem 424 in your textbook. Taylor's formula says this. Let n be a natural number. A, B is a real interval. And F going from A, B to R. That's the setup. So if the N plus first derivative of F exists, if F is differentiable at least N plus one times on the interval A, B, then um, for every pair of points X and X sub zero in A, B, usually we fix x sub zero when we're doing Taylor's stuff, um, then there exists a number c in between x and x zero, right? So I don't really know which one's bigger yet. So uh, between x and x zero, such that, and then here's Taylor's formula. Um, f of x is equal to f of x0 plus the sum n equals 1 to k, uh, sorry, k equals 1 to n. All right, k equals 1 to n of the kth derivative of f evaluated at x0 once again over k factorial times x minus x zero to the k power. And then that's not always perfect. And so then we have this approximation term f n plus first derivative of f evaluated at c over n plus one factorial, same formula, but just plugging in c instead of x zero. x minus x zero to the n plus first term, right? So this is, this is where the remainder term comes from in Taylor polynomials. 
Okay. Um, but for right now, that's all we really need to know. So notice that all of these guys are evaluated at X sub zero. Um, this is the expansion. We, we typically say this is the expansion centered around X sub zero um, because typically we can pick numbers on both sides of X zero and this still works. And that's the way that, that we move forward. So that's the statement of um, Taylor, Taylor's theorem, Taylor's formula. Okay. Um, and so this is Taylor's formula here. And this is this holds um, right for any for any pair of points, x and whatever. So if I change my x, we still have this formula that doesn't really change anything, right? A the, the, this x is like your variable, and x sub zero is your center point, if you will. Okay. Um, so you fix that. Okay, so on to the proof. Now, in order to do the proof, the proof's a little bit like uh, uh, messy, um, technical, like L'Hopital. And like L'Hopital, I'm not going to expect you to be able to do the proof uh, or apply the proof to anything um, for this set of stuff. I'm just expecting you to be able to follow along, and then you should be able to calculate the coefficients uh, found in Taylor's formula. All right, so we're going to, uh, first of all, assume without loss of generality that x um, is larger than x sub 0. It says pick any two points, right? And I told you that our fixed point is x sub 0, so I can pick x to be on the left or the right. It just makes it easier to deal with it one direction. If it's on the other side, everything gets flipped around, and it's just fine. So without loss of generality, I can assume that um, because also if these two were not, I could flip them and call the smaller number x sub 0 every single time, right? Um, by the trichotomy property, as long as these guys are not the same number, which that doesn't make any sense, it says two points, um, then I just call the smaller one x sub zero. Okay, so that's really a result of the trichotomy property that I'm allowed to do that. Okay, so with that, uh, we're going to assume that x is bigger than x naught, and then we're going to define two functions that are, again, just like uh, in the proof of the generalized mean value theorem, we, we define these functions to do what we need them to do and then show that they're okay. So big F of t is simply x minus t, this x, right? x minus t to the n plus 1 all over n plus 1 factorial. Okay, so this is kind of like, kind of like, um, the is at least part of the remainder term, all right, looks like the remainder term, and g of t is much more complicated. g of t is given to be f of x minus f of t minus the sum k equals 1 to n of f, kth derivative of f at t all over k factorial x minus t to the k. All right, so before we get started, I want you to notice where what, what do these things have to do with anything? All right, why, why, why would we pick these functions? These are so weird, all right? Um, well, if if we find a C in between X0 and X, such that g of x0 equals f of x0 times the nth derivative evaluated at c, if we can find that, um, then this all will give us the formula, right? Then we'll have basically plug in x0 for t, here's your f of x, solve for f of x, and you have the formula, okay? so. I'll leave that up to you guys at the end of the proof to kind of verify once we show that this is true, plug that into here and uh, set these equal and you'll get exactly what you want. Okay, you'll get Taylor's formula. So um, I'm going to leave that for you guys to do at the end um, just to verify that because it's just algebra and it saves me a little bit of time. Okay, so, um, so that's what we're shooting for. And so if we were to take this guy to the other side, 
we would have a G over an F, and then we'd be looking for a derivative. So that's kind of a generalized mean value theorem idea. All right. And so uh, to use the generalized mean value theorem, I need to show, right, that F and G are differentiable. Okay, and so um, let's take the derivative here of f of t um, with respect to t because t is the variable, uh, the independent variable there in the definition of f and t and f of g, f and g, all right? And so the derivative of f with respect to t, this is what? simply um, n plus 1 x minus t to the n all over n plus 1 factorial. And so that simplifies and gets you down to x minus t to the n over n factorial. Okay, so as you would expect because of the factorials, there's a relationship there, okay? And so there is a relationship there between the n plus first term and the one before it, differentiating, differentiating that, okay? Um, so with that in mind, okay, let's take a look at a similar derivative, and that's the kth derivative of t over k factorial x minus t to the k, all right, because that's, that's this guy, all right? So I already verified, I verified that f of t, f prime exists. That was easy, right? And then this is what? This is the sum of, g, this is one of these pieces of g of t. We know f is differentiable because that was given. If this thing is differentiable, well, guess what? It's a sum, and the sum of the derivatives is the derivative. The derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives. So if I just take the derivative of one of them, I can show that. And so what do I have here? I have a product rule. And so I get the derivative of the first a cup plus one f of k plus f k plus one of t over k factorial times k minus t to the k, x minus t to the k, plus the kth derivative t over k factorial k times x minus t to the k plus one, to the k minus one. Right, I keep writing the wrong things here. x, k times x minus t to the k minus one. Okay, so that's definitely differentiable as well. g prime exists, got it. Okay, so f prime and g prime exist uh, on the open interval, and so they're differentiable. They're clearly continuous by the sum of, of continuous functions, and so um, they do satisfy the generalized mean value theorem. Okay, uh, one thing here that you want to recognize as well, like I did last time, right, this k here will divide away one of these k's and leave you with k minus one factorial in the denominator, okay? So depending on what we want to do here, um, going to want to want to be able to handle that, okay? Um, and then the other thing we've got here that I forgot to mention, there's a negative one here, right? Because we're taking the derivative with respect to t, not respect to x. So the derivative of x minus t to the k is k, x minus t to the k minus one, and the chain rule gives you a negative one there. And so this will actually become a minus sign in between, and we'll rewrite it like that later on, okay? So what are we gonna do with these guys? Okay, um, well, we need to take a look at g prime of t a little bit closer. Okay, so what was g of t again? g of t was this guy. I missed it. Okay, so let's see if I can get it this time. g of t... All right, let's copy that. 
Get rid of this for a minute. All right, so we've got this here. That's G of T. So um, I guess I should select that and uh, rotate it a little bit so it looks prettier. <laughs> All right, so I'm playing with the technology. Sorry. So we've got G of T here. And so G prime of T then, right, with respect to T, F of X is a constant. So we get zero here. We get minus F prime of T. And then this guy is the stuff that we just did the formula for. So what was the formula for um, the derivative of this? Remember, it was a product. Uh, uh, yeah, it was a product. And so what did we get? Um, we got F, the K plus first derivative, with respect to t over k factorial x minus t, and then plus, this is all in parentheses, right, to the k to the to the k, x minus t to the k, and then we got uh, a plus, but remember the, the negative one, so there was actually a minus here, this was a minus, the kth derivative evaluated at t over k minus one factorial times x minus t to the k minus 1. Okay, so that looks horrible until you recognize, look, this is telescoping. This is k, and this is k minus 1, and we're subtracting. And so by telescoping, what do we get? We get minus f prime of t minus this. What do we get? We get the first, the first one when we plug in n, and the last one when we plug in 1. So if we plug in n, we get f to the n plus 1, of t over n factorial x minus t to the n, and then minus, if you plug in k equal 1, that's the first derivative at t over 1 minus 1 factorial, that's 0 factorial, remember 0 factorial is a 1, and then this is x minus t to the 0, which is also a 1, and so this guy is just f prime of t with a minus and another minus. So this negative f prime of t and this f prime of t cancels as well, and you're just left with negative f n plus first derivative t all over n factorial x minus t to the n. So g prime of t simplifies all the way down to this, hence another reason why we did such a creative version of G of T um, so that we could get G prime to simplify so kindly. Okay, and so we've already found F prime, and so if I want to use the general mean generalized mean value theorem, we are gonna take a look at the ratio of two, and we're actually going to put g prime over top first, over f prime. So by the general mean value theorem, we are looking at g, g prime of t over f prime of t. Uh, remember, we just found g prime, which is negative f n plus first derivative of evaluated at t over n factorial x minus t to the n. And if you go back to the previous page, and take a look at what f prime was. I'll let you go back and look at your notes. You get negative x minus t to the n over n factorial. Well, look at all the canceling. n factorial divides n factorial. This divides this. The negatives divide one another, okay? And so you just get literally f n plus one evaluated at t, okay? And that's true for all that holds for any t not equal to x. And so therefore, what does that mean? That means f and g are differentiable, <laughs> excuse me, and satisfy this equation. And so what we get by the generalized mean value theorem, by generalized mean value theorem, there exists a c between x naught and x such that 
g prime of x over f prime of x equals g of x, sorry, there's a c, there exists a c, mean value theorem gives us a c, right? c and c, music factory, g of x minus g zero over x sub x, f sub x, f of x minus f of x zero. Yep, okay, but we also were told that this equals this. So I can substitute it in by substitution. We have f n plus one of c, evaluated at c, equals g of x minus g of x zero over f of x minus f of x zero. All right, we'll just stay on this page, make it a little easier to write out, okay? But f of x and g of x, by definition, are both zero. Right, they're both zero. Go back to the way we defined f and g again, right? How do we define f and g? You plug in x for t, you get zero. You plug in x for t, you get f of x minus f of x, which is zero minus all this stuff times zero, which is zero. So they're both defined to be zero at x. Okay, so by definition, again, f and g are zero. So therefore, this guy is zero, and this guy is zero, and these two negatives will cancel each other out. And so if you remember back to what our note was. Okay, here's our note. If we can find, all right, if we can find, and the, it didn't copy very well, this is a n plus one right here, all right, if we can find a C so that this is true, then we're done. You guys get to do the rest by doing the algebra. Notice that from what we just had, right, what did we had, we had F n plus one of C equals zero minus G of X zero over zero minus F of X zero. And so that's equal to g of x0 over f of x0 by getting rid of the plus, the minuses. And so we just take this guy to the other side to get our note. All right, so again, I'll show you, or I'll, I'll ask you to verify by plugging in this and this to the original formulas. And when you do that and um, solve for little f of x, you'll find that the Taylor's formula holds, okay? So that's the end of the proof, and there you go, all right? So just to give you one example here of how this would work, something I might ask. Example, find um, the Taylor polynomial. Um, they're defined for you. Um, on page 118. So find P sub N for F of X equal to, uh, we'll say log X. Remember log X is natural log X um, for our textbook. Okay, so what's the definition of PN? PN is simply at x is simply the sum k equals zero to n of f k at x naught k factorial x minus x naught to the k. Uh, I need to find pn at x naught equal to one. All right, I gotta pick a point there. I gotta be a point in my domain also. Okay, so pn then is found to be what? Well, I gotta find patterns for my derivative. So what's my f of x is log? What's f prime of x? One over x. What's f double prime of x? Negative one over x squared. What's f 
3 of x. It's 2 over x cubed. F4 of x is negative uh, 6 over x to the fourth. Da, 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 da. So what's your formula for Fk? And again, notice when you do f sub 0, that's this is f sub 0, right? This is f 0. The original function is f with a 0 up there. And so that allows us to write the formula without having to write the fx out front. Turns out in this case, log of 1 is 0. It doesn't really matter. Um, so what is this? What is fk of 1? Right? Um, so... If you plug in 1 at each one of these guys, evaluated at 1, you get 1. Evaluated at 1, you get negative 1. Evaluated at 1, you get 2. Evaluated at 1, you get negative 6. Okay, so how do I how do I write that? Right, I got 1, negative 1, 2, negative 6. What's going to be the next one? The next one's going to be positive um, 24. Okay, these are factorials. This is 0 factorial, this is 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial, 4 factorial on the top. All right, and um, we're alternating signs. So we take a negative 1 to the k because k 0 is even. Negative 1 to the k um, times k minus, not k minus 1, just k factorial because we started counting at 0, x minus 1 to the k. Okay, and so that's how we got there. Um, again, I had to find this pattern. Um, it may take you longer than it took me to find that pattern, but that's the way you're going to play with it. So basically, this is kind of a, a revamp or a reminder of Calculus 2, just like L'Hopital's rule is. And so I expect you to be able to kind of figure that out and calculate those out um, by hand. But I do not expect you to prove uh, Taylor's formula on your own, okay? Uh, so I hope that helps. Bless you. My, my dog is sneezing. Okay, see ya.